Hello, I want to welcome you to today's class. Today we'll be addressing temperature and density. Um, these are the two topics we'll be dealing with today. It's going to be relatively be a very short and very interesting video. Let's take it from there as usual. We're going to start with a quote first. Uh, the quote is from Professor Chino Achebe, he's a Nigerian poet. Uh, Nigerian born an American based poet he was and then he said the world is like a mask dancing if you want to see it well you do not stand in one place you have to move around and see it you know so I don't have to say much about this but it's an important point for you to think about and then try to apply this in one way or the other in your life. All right, let us take it from there. The two learning objectives we want to address today is number one, we understand what is density and do calculations involving density. We'll be doing calculations involving density. And we're gonna know that density actually is a conversion factor. So this is what we're gonna find out from here as well. And then we do, we also talk about temperature I have to convert from one temperature measurement to another. Let's take it off. Actually, we're going to deal with temperature first. Of course, temperature by simple definition measures the degree of hotness, degree of hotness or coldness of a body. That's exactly what temperature measures. And there are different scales of measuring temperature. Uh, the three common scales that you are going to be encountering are commonly used in the world is the Fahrenheit which is used to use in the United States predominantly. The Celsius is used in the metric system. And then the Kelvin is usually is used in the Kelvin is usually used uh, also in gas laws and in metric system as well. So these are the three units we're going to. So now if you look at those three units, now, like I said, the Celsius and the Kelvin Celsius are very, very popular in scientific work. Most of the scientific work you do, researches and all those gas laws, you basically use these two and then talk about it from one to another. Now, the basic thing we need to understand is how we're going to be using different, all these temperature scale and convert them from one from themselves. Now, this is the Fahrenheit scale. The Fahrenheit scale has the, um, the boiling point of water to be at 212 and the melting point of water to be at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In the Celsius scale, we have what water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and 0.0, .0 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in the Kelvin scale, water boils at 37 Kelvin and 273 Kelvin. Now, if you look at this, the Kelvin temperature scale doesn't require the small degree sign. You just put K directly. Now, these, the other things we see here is what we call the zero Kelvin. We call it the absolute zero. The absolute zero is at the point whereby it is thought that every matter doesn't have any volume again. It becomes completely zero. Motion completely stops us. So it's a theoretical value at this point. But these values have helped us to develop important relationships in converting from one te temperature scale to another. Now, it is not something you need to memorize that will always be given to you in your exams. So if you want to convert from one temperature scale to another, these are the formulas you use. If you want to convert from Celsius, from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you're going to be using this formula. If you want to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you use this formula. This formula looks like opposite of this formula. So if you rearrange this formula, you're going to get this. That's what these formulas are. Then if you have it in Kelvin scale, you want to convert it to Celsius. What you're simply going to do is subtract 273 from the Kelvin scale. And if you have it in Celsius, I want to convert it to Kelvin. What you simply do is to add 273. So we're going to be using this in solving a few problems in temperature. Okay, let's quickly take that off. It says tonight's low in Yakima is about 43 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put a degree here. That's my mistake. So what is the temperature in Celsius and in Kelvin? So we have the unit in Fahrenheit. We want to convert it to Celsius and Kelvin. That is our preoccupation so this is two questions so first of all we're going to convert now the easiest thing to do is to convert it first because there's no direct conversion between fahrenheit 
to Kelvin. So what are we going to do first? We're going to take this Fahrenheit and convert it to Celsius with the formula. So first, if I'm going to have the first problem, which is the given Fahrenheit is, if you look at that formula again, 5 over 9, then your degree Fahrenheit minus 32. This is the formula using converting from Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. So if we substitute all our values there, what do we get? Degree Fahrenheit here is 43. That's what we have. If we subtract it by 32, and then if you do 43 minus 32 times it by 5 over 9, you're going to be getting 6.1 degrees Celsius. That is what you get. Very simple. Just your formula will be provided for you in the exam. What you simply do is know how to apply this formula and which particular formula will you need in doing this problem. Now, in the second problem, like I said, there is no direct conversion from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. What you simply need to do is to go from what you have here. We already have this. So what do we do? Now, if you want to convert to Kelvin, Kelvin doesn't have its a, 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 a degree sign. We're going to do our degree Fahrenheit plus 273. And our degree Fahrenheit is 6.1 degrees. Sorry, degree, our degree Celsius plus 273. Sorry, my bad. That was a mistake. So 6.1 degrees Celsius plus 273. If you add this, it's going to give you 279 Kelvin. This becomes the equivalent of this in Kelvin. Earlier, we did the equivalent in Celsius. So this is how to do this problem. The second question says, tonight's temperature at the center of the South Pole is about negative 53 Celsius. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit? Again, it is just the opposite of this formula. If you rearrange it, but it has been rearranged for you already. You did not worry about that too much. So it's going to be 9 divided by 5. We we'll multiply this by Celsius plus 32. Before, I don't usually put this bracket, but students tend to confuse the lot. Now I say put this bracket and do it first before you add it so that if you if you don't do this side first and add it, that becomes a problem. So let's see, that's going to be, we have it as negative 53.5. So we're going to say 9 divided by 5 bracket. Now we add this. Now, temperature can have a negative and a positive. So for no reason, Will you not put those signs there when you are giving it to you, when it is given to you? So if you punch this in your calculator very correctly, it's going to give you negative 64.3 degrees Fahrenheit. This becomes how you do this. So temperature problems are very trivial and easy. What you simply need to do is to apply the right formula and convert from one temperature scale to another. Now that takes us to something that is going to take most of our time, density. Uh, density can be defined in so many ways. It is just a, defined as mass per unit volume of an object. Or you can say the ratio of mass to volume of any object. Of course, the mass is represented by M, the volume is represented by V, and the density is represented by D. Now, it can be in any unit. It doesn't matter. What matters is that if you're going to use it for a conversion, you need to make sure that the unit, your unit cancel. Now, the most commonly used unit of density, particularly in the metric system, is grams per mil. What it simply means is that the gram is on top and the mil is at the bottom. So usually this is the commonly used unit. Now, and particularly for liquids and solid. And for gases, usually we use grams per liter for gases. Of course, gases usually have a lot of volume. You know, gases assume the volume of any vessels they are. So if we have an example here, it says, if it's a three point, two mils of a liquid has a mass of this. What is the density? If you ask to find density, simply use the formula. Density is mass over volume. And then we have our mass here to be 61.5. The mass was given to you. Grams divided by the volume here is 73.2 mils. And when you divide these two, of course, you're going to get 0 0.840 grams please this is grams let me write it more appropriately grams per meal or you can say grams over meal so now one important thing i want you to take away from here is that density has two if you look at it here density has two units it has a unit on the top and a unit below look at like this grams per meal because it has two units density can be used as a conversion factor density is used as a conversion factor.
for volume and mass. So if you want to look for mass and volume and you have the density, what you simply need to do is to use density value and then adjust the density depending on what you want to take away and what you want to keep. If you want to keep the mass, you're going to keep the mass on top. If you want to keep the, the, keep the volume, you're going to keep the volume on top. And let's see how this is going to be applied. But before we do that, let's introduce another important concept. The concept of specific gravity. Specific gravity simply means comparing the, the density of water to the density of any of the object. Water is taken to be a standard. And in fact, in metric system, the, the, the density of water is one, approximately 1.00 grams per meal. You see, it is unity. It's just one. What this simply means is that you can take it as a standard. So what we simply mean is that we divide the density of anything by the density of water. That gives you the specific gravity. So you can say that this specific gravity is simply the ratio of density of object, density of object to water, any object. And of course, for you to do this, the unit must agree. You make sure that the units have to agree for the cancellation to be proper. And because of that, because the unit is going to cancel, the specific gravity has no unit. It is dimensionless. It has no unit. Let's see this example. It says at 20 degrees Celsius, the density of copper is this, and the density of water is this. What is the specific gravity? Specific gravity, we usually say is SG, will give us the density of copper grams per mil divided by the density of water grams per mil. Now, if you look at this, let's try to cancel. Gram per mil cancels gram. Oh, I, I didn't cancel that well. Cancels grams per mil, and we are left with when you divide this, your answer is still going to be. Of course, this is the one will give you 8.92 alone because the unit has been cancelled. This is the specific gravity of copper. So we're going to use examples and practice on how to do this stuff. Now let's take the first example. It says a 20 mil sample of a liquid is put into an empty beaker. And the mass of that has a mass. Now this is the mass of the bigger. But it says the mass of the bigger and the container and the contained liquid now weighs this. Now remember, for you to get the liquids do not have specific volume. So for you to get their volume, you need to put them in something. And at the end of the day, you need to take away the volume of the empty container and then for you to get sorry, the mass of the empty container for you to get the mass. So what it simply means here is that now. Of course, it says calculate the density. Remember, the liquid will always have a definite volume. So we know the volume of this is going to be 20.00 mils. We know the volume. Now, but we, we don't know the mass of the liquid yet, but we know that the mass of the beaker, let's try to write all we need. Mass of beaker. The mass of beaker here is 31.447 grams. This is the mass of the empty beaker. Now, when, we, when you added the liquid, the mass came up to, now this is mass of beaker. If you have the beaker, you add a plus liquid. Of course, we don't know what the liquid is, so we just say liquid give, give us 55.891 grams. Now, for you to get the mass of the liquid, you're going to take away this mass from this total mass. So the mass of the liquid will be mass of liquid will give you 55.891 minus 31.447 and that will give you 24.444 grams. Now remember earlier we have the volume of the liquid and now we have the mass of the liquid. So if we're going to do density, density will give us mass over volume. So the mass is going to be 24.444 grams divided by 20.00 Mills. And if you do this well, it's going to give us approximately 1.222 grams per mil. So this is how we do density problems. Now, let's see. Now, remember what I said earlier. Density is used as a conversion factor. So that is where we'll be giving, going today now. So in solving this problem now, the bottom line there is that we're going to be using density as a conversion factor, like I earlier said. And it is very notorious in doing that. 
It says the density of iron is this. We've been given the density of iron. The first question says, we use the density value here, which is given, to calculate the mass of an iron sample that has a volume of this. Now, we have a volume. We're, we're not being asked directly. This question is very friendly because I say use the density value. In some other question, I'll give you an exam in a quiz. I will not be direct with this. Now, let's try to understand what this means. If this is the density, we can set up a conversion factor with this. This simply means, now, let's look at this. This simply means 7.2 grams is equivalent to 1 cubic centimeter. That's what it means. This is the conversion factor you can use. So what matters is that you can put it on top or you can put it below. So two, two things we can have here will be, it can be 7.2 grams over 1 cubic centimeter, or we can say 1 cubic centimeter divided by 7.2 grams. Now, since we, are look, you say, since we are looking for the mass, we want the grams to be on top. So it's easy. We're going to be using this as a conversion factor and we'll multiply it by this. So let's do it. So it's going to be 35.0 cubic centimeter times, we're using this. So what we simply need to do is 7.2 grams over 1 cubic centimeter. Now, if we cancel cubic centimeter, cancel cubic centimeter, our answer becomes this times this is going to give you 252 grams of that ion sample. will give you what occupy this particular volume. So, have you seen that? Density is simply a conversion factor. Let's do for the second problem. Say, so use the density value again to find the volume that will be occupied by this mass. I'll change my, this pen to red again. I like writing with red. So, what that simply means is that, again, since we're looking for the volume, we're going to be using this conversion factor. <coughs> I'll use green for that, too. Let me see. So, we're going to be using for this second problem now. So, what it means is that we're going to be multiplying it with this. So doing that, I'm going to say 138 grams. If I multiply it by one cubic centimeter, I want cubic centimeter. That's why I kept it on top. One cubic centimeter divided by 7.2 grams. Now let's see what happened in there. Grams is canceling grams is diagonal and that makes sense. And when you divide this by this, it's going to give you 19.2 cubic centimeter. So what you've simply done here is to flip in this question. We flipped the density value. The density value was flipped because of the sign. If we hadn't flipped it, this answer wouldn't have worked. We found that we're going to be multiplying grams by grams and that will give us grams squared and that will be. So this is the beauty of the dimension analysis. Let's go to the next problem. Now, this next problem is an interesting problem. This is called density by water displacement. Density by water displacement. Now, how this works for objects that are irregular. There are some solids that are irregular that they are not well dimensioned. Like they are not like square that you can really calculate the, the volume of the square or, or, or a rectangle or a sphere, or those regular objects, they're irregular. So what you do, the best thing you need is to use this method. How does this method work? Now, before I read the question, I'm going to explain it. Now, you're going to do this in the lab as well. Here now, since we have a small object, you're going to get a container. In this case, we are using a cylinder. This is a cylinder. This is a cylinder, just to let you know. That's what we're using now. So this cylinder, we're going to put some amount of water in it at a particular level, and we're going to record that level as our first volume, V1. And then we're going to drop this block. It could be a metal, it could be a solid, it could be a stone. We drop it inside. When you drop it inside, of course, that will tell you that the metal or the stone is going to occupy some space and push the level of this water to a new level. See now, so the level was somewhere before, and later, this was like the V1. When we added the stone, it went to a new a new volume v2 no so for us to find the, vo the volume occupied by this metal now what we simply need to do is to do what is to subtract the first volume from the second volume so the volume of the object will be the second volume where it through arrows minus the first volume where when the cylinder was empty if we get this volume of course the mass of an object can easily be weighed a solid can easily be weighed we divide that by this and we get our answer so let's do the problem First of all, let's see what we have. 
the mass of this object is 15.7 grams. That's perfect. Now, we don't know the volume, but we know the volume of water. So the volume of water here, I'm going to use V1 and V2, like I said. So the volume, the first thing I need to say is the volume of, let me put it here, the volume of water when this cylinder is just only water without having the stone inside, without having the precious metal inside here, there's no pressure. So we said it is then placed. This is a, an irregular piece of precious metal. Where is this? It is then placed in a graduated cylinder that contains water and it does not flow. So it contains water initially. It says water in the cylinder was at this level before the it was added. So before it was added, the volume was at this point at 1.6 mils. Before it was added. Now, after it was added, the volume rose to 36.3 mils. You say, what is the density? So what is the overall volume of this object is just going to give us the V2 like I did here minus V1. So my V2 is 36.3 minus 31.6. And when you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get 4.7 mils. And then we now have what we need. We have our mass here. We have our what? Volume. So the density of this object is now is going to be the mass, which is 15.7 grams, divided by the volume 4.7 mils. And when you put that in your calculator, you're going to be getting 3.3 grams per mil. So this method is actually called the water displacement method in determining the volume of a solid with an irregular shape. It's irregular that it doesn't have a definite uh, dimensional uh, volume, like square or rectangle to determine its volume. That is what we use in doing that. Now, the next problem, let's quickly do that. It says an object has a mass of 2 kilograms. Let's look at it. And a volume of 3 quarts. So what's the density of this object in grams per mil? It now says, will this object float in water? If the density of water is one grams per mil. Now, this, uh, this question is in two parts. Now, you can do this in two ways. You can first of all do this and then start converting your density, which is one way. The second way, like students like doing that, is that first of all, they, since they say what is the density in grams per mil, they want to convert this to grams and they want to convert this to mils, which is okay. We can do that. So let's start with that. So if you have 2.0 kilograms, 2.00 kilogram and I want to convert it to grams. Of course, kilo is a matrix unit which you need to memorize. I know that a kilogram will give me a thousand gram. And when you multiply that, it's going to give you 2,000 grams. That's what you're going to get there. 2,000 grams. Now, that is what you get. Now, the second problem will be and of course, 2,000 grams. We know in this class, we don't if enforce a lot of uh, significant figures. But assuming you want to maintain these two, three digits you have here, you can easily say this is all. You can say 2.00 times 10, 1, 2, 3 to the power of 3 grams. Now, what next thing do you do? We now convert the quart. The quart now want to convert it to what? To mils. Remember, we're given this, which is friendly. You don't need to memorize this uh, metric to English unit conversion. You don't need to memorize it at all. It will always be given to you. So what we're going to do now is to convert this to mils. So we have this to do that. So we can start. So we, let's do our quarts. So if we have 3.00 quarts, we're going to convert it to liters. That's the direct conversion. First. So we're looking for mils. But if we convert it to mils, liters, we can get it to mils. Because we know that a liter is a thousand mils. So we do that. So we know from here we have our liters is going to be on top because we want it to, that's what we're looking for. So it's going to be 0.946 liters over one quart. And then let's cancel. Remember, I didn't cancel this. I like canceling at any point. And then the next thing, we're not looking for liters. We're looking for mils. But we know that a liter is a thousand mils. And then again, if you cancel this and cancel this, and put this in your calculator, you're going to get 2838 mils. Now, 
That is the answer you get. But this is not what we wanted. We're looking for density. So to calculate the density, we have it in mils, we have it in grams. It's easy for us to finish up. To finish up this problem now, our density is going to be 2,000 grams divided by 2838 mils. If you do that, it's going to give you 0 0.7. 0 0.04 grams per mil. So now we have our density in gram per mil, and the first question has been done. This is exactly how you do this problem. Now, but the second problem says, if the density of water is one gram per mil, would this object float? Now, let me, I think, let me give you a boss and write this. If this object has a density, if the object has a density, has a density less than 1.00 grams per mil, which is density of water, it will float. But if the density is greater than that of water, it will not float in water. What will it rather do? It will sink. But in this case, since the object has a density that is less than 1.00, it will float in water. So you're going to say the object will float. And the reason why it will float is because it has a density less than that of water. So that is how you solve this problem. We go to the next problem. The next problem says, what is the volume of 15 grams of silver? The density has been given. Again, I'm not going to try to write the conversion factors again. You are looking for the volume. Remember, if you're going to use the volume, you have to flip your density value. So let's start. We have 15 grams. And then... You're going to flip this. Flipping this means, since you're looking for volume, and the volume here is in cubic centimeter, so what it means, we're going to say 1 cubic centimeter divided by 10.5 grams. And when you punch that into your calculator, you get 1.4 cubic centimeter. The second one, again, is the continuation of this problem, like we did before. It says, what is the mass? If you're going to do the mass, you don't need to flip it because the grams is on top. So we're going to say 9.0 cubic centimeter, and then... We're going to multiply it. This is already on top. 10.5 grams is on top. Cubic centimeter is on the bottom. So if we cancel this and cancel this, uh, let me cancel this on this. It will give you approximately 200 grams of that silver. That's exactly what it's going to give you. All right. So always try to pause this video, try out these problems yourself, and come back so that you're going to get every bit of it. All right? Okay, let's go. Finally, we're going to be going to the last problem at this juncture. I told you the lesson is going to be a short one, but straight and direct and beautiful. All right, it says, what is the volume of 15 grams of silver? Now, look at the density of silver given to you. It's grams per cubic centimeter. There is nothing given in kilograms. So what are you going to do? Your mind is going to tell you the first thing you need to do is to convert the volume, to convert this kilogram to what? Grams. So let's do that. Of course, 15 kilogram, 15 kilogram, to convert it to gram, of course, we know that a kilogram will be on the bottom, gram will be on top. That's what we're looking for. So if you cancel that, it's going to give you this. However, our problem is not this. We now want to convert this. See what we're doing here now. We want to convert this mass to volume. Remember again, you are going to use the density here to do that. And to do to convert to volume, the, the volume, or rather, the, the volume unit has to be on top. And the volume unit here is what? Centimeter cube. So we're going to say one centimeter cube over 10.5 grams. And that makes it easy because grams will cancel itself beautifully. And when you punch this into your calculator, you're going to get approximately, you're going to get 1429 centimeter cube. That is exactly what you're going to get. Or 1400 in two significant digits, since this has two significant digits, 1400 centimeter cube. Remember again, I, with, in this class, I do not enforce significant figures however it is good that i always give you that i view and write it so that you're going to get used to it because you can get to the next class and you're going to be required to use the significant digits 
at this point we're done with this class thank you for listening and as usual if you have any questions feel free to get to me through the usual channels thank you and have a wonderful day